So for this assignment, assignment two this week, you'll have two items to write. So we're going to go over both of those and brainstorm those a little bit. Uh, the first one is fairly short. Here it is right here. It's on page 152, number two. Um, it is from section two. And so this story you want to remember, read it first. The first question you ask yourself is what happened? So as you read this, um, answer the question, what happened? Who is involved? Who did what? And then also you want to ask yourself, do we delay ID or immediately ID our people? We have two people in the story. And so I thought it would be a good idea to practice um, what it is that we're going to do. So uh, we can make her an LSU student. In fact, our audience will be LSU. So we don't need to spell out Louisiana State University. We can just um, write LSU. Now remember AP style, no periods, right? Straight up LSU. And let's do something different here as well. Uh, we're going to identify our people in the lead. So I would say here that we would do this to be, this is going to be delayed ID. It involves an LSU student who tried to help or tried to save the life of a sheriff's deputy, William McGowan. Now remember, you need to check the names. I'm not going to remind you any more after today. Um, you need to assume that the names are wrong. Now we're going to use names here and ages, but we're not going to use addresses. Uh, this would be a story where we really wouldn't use addresses. Uh, we don't need her address. Um, in a death story, often you do have the address just to differentiate um, this person among other people who might have the same name. But the fact that he's a sheriff's deputy really narrows down his identity. So we don't need to do that here. And you chances are you wouldn't do this professionally either. So, but we want to have the ages and we want to have, we want to have ages for both of those. Uh, you would have his age here um, for a story like this. Let's just go ahead and put her age. Um, it shows us a little bit about her. She's your traditional student at LSU. Um, now, AP style, we don't have this on our list, but AP style allows you to say CPR on the first reference. So we don't need to spell out this long term either. Um, but the key is you need to decide how you're going to start this. Which who are you going to use first? Um, you can use Karen, right? You can use the deputy. Um, you could also use lightning. Lightning is what caused all of this problem. Now, one thing too, this is a fairly short story. Your lead should be longer than your second paragraph. Actually, you're not going to have much left because what you're going to do in the second paragraph is identify the people involved. Uh, you need to make a complete sentence so you don't have to save anything, um, but you need to just give us a complete sentence for the second paragraph. So for example, um, you might start off saying LSU student, an LSU student tried to save the life of a sheriff's deputy. Um, let's, let's do a couple things here. We're going to add some facts to the story. Um, first of all, we would always have um, a where here. Um, and so we really don't have a where. So let's go ahead and say this is near Tiger Stadium. So we're going to capitalize Tiger Stadium. Uh, that's a really big landmark in the Baton Rouge area, and so people would know where this is. Sometimes a landmark is a good way to identify a where. Uh, you could be specific later, especially in broadcast writing. You would be more prone to use a landmark or something that a listener can identify easily. Um, so let's go ahead and say near Tiger Stadium, and let's go ahead and say uh, Monday, because I don't see a where, a when, I'm sorry, a when here. So let's go ahead and say Monday. Um, but also, so she performed, so what happened? So if you want to tell somebody what happened, um, you're texting your friend, you're watching this go on, you might say, 
You're not going to believe what I'm looking at. The student's trying to trying to save the life of a deputy. He was struck by lightning um, while directing traffic, and there's an electrical storm. It's crazy out here. Okay, so that might be what you would tell your friend. Uh, and I think it's important to put the context of what he was doing. If you just say that he was struck by lightning and that's it in the lead, we could think, oh, well, he was fishing, walking down the street. But here he is performing his duty uh, in a dangerous situation. Now, we don't know why he was directing traffic, what was going on there. We would have that in the story. But he's doing all this during a lightning storm. So you do not want to bury that. That needs to all be in your lead. So you can see how your lead's really going to say just about everything except the identities of the people. So that's going to be in your second paragraph. So go ahead and start on that. Let me know if you have any questions. You'll be fine.